So with what apparatus can we sense pressure? Well, we usually use pressure gauges. Uh, there are some old analog gauges and also newer digital gauges. So I'll start with uh, really old gauges. Uh, this one is called open tube manometer. And this manometer is designed to measure gas that is uh, restricted in this, uh, this sphere. So the tube that comes out, goes up, it's got an open end. And also filled with, uh, with liquid, such as water. So uh, the gas inside here, let's say it has a pressure of P1. And uh, the atmosphere has pressure of P0. So that's atmosphere and outside. Okay, so um, this gas pressure P1 is also present right here at this interface. So this is P1. This is also P1, right at this interface. And uh, the uh, atmospheric pressure is at this interface. So now uh, we know that in the same liquid, the, uh, the same height has the same pressure. So if we extend this line to the right, and at this height, we should also have P1. And um, if we measure a height here between P1's, this left side uh, liquid level and the right side liquid level, we call this H. Um, according to, uh, to the pressure formula that we described, we know that P1, that is at this point, uh, which is below that, right? So P1 is P0 plus rho G H. So we can find out the pressure of the, uh, the gas inside of this, uh, this sphere, uh, at a, um, a glass bulb, just by holding it uh, with some water in this tube and open it up to, uh, to atmosphere. If we know the approximate pressure of the atmosphere, we can find out the pressure in the, uh, in the gas. So uh, if you say, if you put your hand on it, uh, Okay, so if you put your hand on it, um, then you'll you'll be uh, basically warming up the uh, uh, this uh, this this gas bulb, and um, it'll um, it'll actually expand. The gas expands, and uh, it uh, it has a slightly higher pressure at higher temperature. So uh, this liquid level will be pushed down. This liquid level gets pushed up. And the difference tells you the uh, the new pressure is not very convenient to use because um, this level is not um, is not constant unless you uh, if you have this flexible tube maybe a rubber tube so that rubber holds so you can take this right side and try to move it up until this level is always um, fixed at a maybe a marked position so then you can read from that marked position up to find that pressure. And uh, these days we don't really use them anymore. We have digital um, uh, digital pressure gauges. Uh, a little a little box with uh, with a sensor in it that tells you the pressure without having to have this uh, this liquid or this glass tube anymore. So that is for measuring uh, gas. Um, and uh, for measuring atmospheric pressure, we use something that is similar. So let's imagine we have a large container of liquid. And uh, we uh, we put a um, a test tube inside of the liquid, here's the liquid surface, so uh, the test tube is filled with the liquid. And then you take this side, the, the, uh, the closed end, and try to raise it up. So, after you raise it up, uh, you, uh, you, you pull it up, and let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, 
two, three, four, five, six, roughly this size. All right. So you raise it up, and uh, it'll uh, the liquid will follow until it stops following. So this is still the, the level of liquid in this container, but the liquid also follows inside of the um, the test tube to a certain point. And this point doesn't change height, yeah, even if you pull the, uh, the, the test tube further up or try to lower it further down, as long as there's a, still this empty region, uh, this liquid level doesn't change its height. So uh, what happens here is this is, uh, this is vacuum. Because there's, a, there's nothing here. And this level here has a height h to this liquid level. So this liquid level is at the pressure zero, which is pressure of the atmosphere that we want to measure. And um, according to our um, pressure formula here, um, this pressure here, this P0, which is below this um, interface, by a, uh, a height of h, so uh, we can say that p0 is equal to this uh, p, uh, let's call this p1, p1 uh, is equal to 0 because it's vacuum, so p1 plus rho g h, or it's just equal to rho g h, and uh, we realize that P0 is the, the P of, of atmosphere, so the atmospheric pressure can be measured by rho of the liquid G of gravity and H the height. So it's proportional to height. So I can put some markings here. Something like this to indicate pressure. And um, uh, the only liquid that could do this effectively would be uh, mercury because of its high pressure and even with mercury it would take this H so with uh, with 1 atm which is 101.325 pascals it would take 760 millimeters of mercury so this height is 760 if you have a an exact one atmosphere. So that's already a relatively large device, almost a meter tall, and it's, it's got a lot of uh, mercury in it, and we no longer use this type of device in our lab anymore. But uh, this used to be a very common apparatus as a uh, uh, barometer. So this is the, uh, the um, mercury barometer. Okay, so what do we do these days to the measure pressure? Uh, these days, things are simple. This is a digital pressure gauge. So we have this little capsule. Uh, this capsule is made of metal. It's kind of drills in so that it has this volume inside. And then we slap a film on it is a special film, a piezoelectric film. So what the piezoelectric film does is it, uh, it flexes as, uh, as pressure is applied to it and the inside is vacuum. So you evacuate this uh, little uh, capsule, and then you slap the, the film on, and, and then you take it out into the uh, atmosphere. So then the, uh, the inside doesn't push up, but the outside pushes down. So that results in the film being pushed in. So I'll just draw some uh, curved lines to indicate the film has been pushed in. So... Uh,
film's flexing in, and that causes a an electrical signal, a voltage. And this voltage uh, will be translated into pressure. But unlike all of these that are relative or gauge pressure, this is uh, this is uh, the absolute pressure because it is comparing with this vacuum. Right? The vacuum is maintained. Um, so if you have a digital um, digital say a, a pressure gauge, say a pressure gauge, the old pressure gauge, which is a um, a spring with a with a with a rod inside, so that the rod will rise proportional to the pressure inside of a tire. That rod is indicating a zero in one atmosphere, at least in the uh, atmosphere, and it only reads the uh, the the gauge pressure or the pressure of the um, of the tire above the atmospheric pressure. So that always works like that. Uh, on the other hand, this new digital gauge it measures. Uh, it compares with the vacuum it has internally, so that if you have a digital um, uh, pressure gauge, tire pressure gauge, it actually turns on, and for a few seconds, it wouldn't measure anything. And if you were to to stick it against your your inner tube, it would probably report error. So the first few seconds, it, it starts up. What it does is it's uh, it's taking measurements of the atmospheric pressure, so that it could have a nice average and then you stick it against your inner tube and that pressure absolute pressure is measured again and then the atmospheric pressure is subtracted away from that absolute pressure of the tire gate a tire uh, the inner tube and then still the gauge pressure is displayed so that's how this thing works and since we know that uh, this film is interesting it flexes and, and that creates voltage you can use this as a microphone So if you have an audio source and you have this film here uh, that's probably mounted on a uh, kind of metal backing so that the, the film will be actually be flexing so you'll be able to um, get some voltages so voltage output and all the modern uh, uh, microphones on, on, the, on the smartphone or on the, on the laptop computer tablet or maybe on the, on the small um, headset these are all the same exact principle they use these very tiny, tiny uh, uh, piezoelectric um, film to convert um, sound waves into uh, voltages and then they can record them and uh, you can also turn this thing around and if you apply a voltage it will flex the voltage will flex the film so that if you if you flex the film periodically by applying a periodic voltage and then uh, you can you can flex the film which pushes the, uh, the air periodically to create sound waves so uh, you can use this as a speaker as well. So with a speaker, you just play some electrical signal. On this thing. Hit connect to that. And it will basically send out sound waves because it flexes periodically due to the uh, the voltage input and here we have sound waves okay so uh, we still have some space here I plan for another um, in apparatus a, a YouTube the, the YouTube is not exactly related to uh, pressure measurement devices or pressure gauge, but it is an interesting device and nevertheless, so let's uh, let's look at, look at the YouTube 
So we have a YouTube. All right, so here's the tube. And I'll fill different liquids, uh, different and immiscible liquids um, on either side. So we have some liquid one here, it fills up to this height. And then we also have some liquid two that fills up to a different height and their, their interface is somewhere over here. Um, okay, so let's color the liquid. So this side is red. The other side is blue. Okay, so now we have two different types of liquid, and uh, um, what can we figure out from uh, from such a such a YouTube? So um, let's set up some uh, some coordinate. So we start with a an origin and let the coordinate point downward. So this is the zero, and here we have. Um, Let's say y2, and here we have y1, and we can also define between y1 and y2. So uh, from here, so we can define this as say h left side. So compared to the interface, how high the left side. Um, but interface between the two liquids, how high the left interface with air is. And then we can also define this side as H right. So also between its own liquid and air interface and uh, the, the two liquid interface. So two different heights and also we have these coordinates. So uh, we can say that Y2 minus Y1 is equal to height L and Y2 minus zero or Y2 is equal to height R. Okay, and uh, the pressure equation, um, this type of equation can only apply to one uniform liquid. That means either the red or the blue, but not both. On the other hand, they have this interface here. So at the interface, the pressure of the red and the blue liquids are exactly the same. Otherwise, this interface would move towards the side that has less pressure, right? The higher pressure side will push the interface towards the lower uh, pressure side. If we already have equilibrium, then the pressure on both sides are the same. So let's call the pressure here P2 because we have a coordinate uh, of Y2. So P2 here is both inside the red liquid and the blue liquid. So let's talk about the blue liquid. This is easier. So we start from this surface, which has pressure P0 open to the, uh, the air atmosphere. So from P0, you go down of, of this depth. This depth is this Y2, and you reach P2 pressure. So you can use um, the pressure formula. Oops. P2 is equal to P0 plus rho G, how much height was changing. And uh, this is this height. So HR. So that is in blue liquid. All right. And then let's move to the red liquid. This point is also in the red liquid because it's on the interface. So this P2 has the same pressure as this same height inside the same liquid. This, is, this side is also P2. And here we also have P0 because this is open to the atmosphere. So atmosphere will have the same pressure. And um, we can use uh, the formula for, for pressure inside the left liquid, the, uh, the red liquid, to relate pressure at P2 and pressure at P0. So pressure P2 is pressure P0. Oh, sorry, here I forgot to put pressure, uh, the, uh, the right liquid density there. All right, back there. So here the left side liquid, liquid left side, G, and uh, between these two is H left. So H left. And the two pressures are the same 
because they're they're on an interface. So now we have P0 plus row right G H right equals P0 plus row left G H left. And we subtract the, the P and divide the G. So we have row right H right equals row left H left. Or we can say row right over row left. So the relative uh, density between the two liquids, right over the left, is H left over H right. And from uh, this diagram, the the blue and the red, the H left is uh, is this is a smaller quantity than H right, the 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 taller height. Right. So uh, in our case. This uh, this is h left over h right is less than one. So uh, density on the right side, right side density is less than the left side density. So we have less dense liquid uh, trying to basically make up the same amount of pressure change from P zero to P two that requires a longer uh, volume, a longer uh, larger volume or uh, deeper. Um, uh, deeper depths because uh, the the pre the uh, um, the density is less compared to the red liquid thank you